Hi, I'm Professor Baldwin, and today I'm going to teach you how to graph rational functions. Here we have two rational functions, the reciprocal function, 1 over x, and the reciprocal squared function, 1 over x squared. These are the two mother functions or parent functions for rational functions. In our first example, we're going to graph the function using transformations. Remember your order of transformations. First, we want to identify the mother. And the mother function here, well, we have a squared in the denominator, so the mother function is the reciprocal squared function, 1 over x squared. Now we want to go through the order of transformations. First, do we have any horizontal shifts? We do. This 1 is a shift right by one unit. Second would be stretches or shrinks. And there are no stretches or shrinks, right? We're not multiplying by anything. Three, we're looking for reflections. Well, do we have a negative sign? No, so we have no reflections. Last are the vertical shifts. That would be the plus two here on the outside. And that tells us to shift up two units. So our two big transformations are right one unit and then up two units. And remember to do that, we can take that mother function, this graph here on the right, we can find some key points and then shift them right and then up. First, I'm going to start with those asymptotes. So notice that we have asymptotes of the y-axis and the x-axis. So if we start with that vertical asymptote on the y-axis, if we shift it right one unit, we end up with an asymptote here at x equals 1. Likewise, that horizontal asymptote that was on the x-axis, we need to move it up two units. That would end up here at y equals 2. Now we want to go and look at that mother function and find some points that we can transform. That's kind of hard to see. How about these two points? First, we have the point 1, 1. If we start at 1, 1, we're going to move that up. Sorry, we're going to move that right 1 up 2. And we end up here at the point 2, 3. And we know that we approach the vertical asymptote on the left-hand side here, and we approach the horizontal asymptote. Now we can take our second point, negative 1, 1. Start here at negative 1, 1. We need to go right 1, and we need to go up 2. That gives us a point here. And then we can draw how we approach the vertical asymptote and how we approach the horizontal asymptote. If you remember your transformations and the order of transformations, this can be pretty easy. But what if you have a rational function that you can't easily identify what the mother function is? Then you would want to follow these seven steps. You want to find some key points. You're going to find the intercepts. You're going to find the asymptotes. And then you're going to figure out what the function does at those asymptotes. Does it cross at the horizontal asymptote or not? We're going to go through these seven steps with an example. So we're going to graph the function t of x following those seven steps. Step one is to find that y-intercept. That would be t of 0. 
So we're substituting in zero for our x. So four times zero over zero squared minus two times zero minus three. Well, this simplifies down to zero divided by negative three. Zero divided by anything is zero. So your y-intercept is zero, zero. I'm going to plot that point. Step two is to find your x-intercept. Your x-intercept is going to be when that numerator equals zero. So when does 4x equal zero? Well, that's when x equals zero. That's the point zero, zero. Well, that one doesn't help us too much since our x-intercept and our y-intercept are both the same point, the origin. Step three. We want to look for vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are based on your denominator. So when is your denominator equal to zero? Well, let's factor that polynomial, x minus three times x plus one equals zero. Use the zero product property, and we have x minus three equals zero or when x equals 3, and x plus 1 equals 0, or when x equals negative 1. Here we have two vertical asymptotes, so let's put those on. Here is x equals 3, and we want to label them x equals 3, and then x equals negative 1. Step four is to find any horizontal asymptotes. So your numerator has degree one and your denominator, that's a squared, so it's degree two. N is less than M, right? The degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator. So Y equals zero is going to be that horizontal asymptote. So we can put that on. Okay, five. Where do we cross the horizontal asymptote? So is there a point that crosses? Well, we already know that our x and y intercept here, the origin, is at that asymptote. So let's see if there's another point that crosses. So when does our polynomial, oops, x squared minus 2x minus 3, when is it equal to 0? Well, when that numerator is equal to 0. So our only crossing point is 0, 0. And then step 6 is going to be just extra points. So this is going to be based on what you already have and where you think you need a little more information. So let's see. We only have one point, so we need a lot more information to figure out what's going on here. So if you look at the vertical asymptotes, we kind of have three intervals. So let's try to find something to the left of negative one. So let's look at when x equals negative 2. So find f of negative 2. That'll give us an idea of what's happening on that left side. Is our graph positive or negative? So we get negative 8 over 4 plus 4 minus 3. So we get negative 8 fifths. So at negative 2, we're about here, negative two and negative one and three fifths. Okay, and we know that we're going to approach these asymptotes because we found out earlier that we don't cross any others. We only cross at the origin. Okay, we know we have a point here, the origin in this middle interval, but we don't know what else is going on. So we want to pick another value. 
So let's look at something easy like x equals 1. So f of 1, we get 4 over 1 minus 2 minus 3, 4 over negative 4, so we get negative 1. So at the point 1, we have negative 1. So now we kind of know what's going on. Here on the right, it's going to approach that vertical asymptote of x equals 3. And on the left, it's going to head up and approach the vertical asymptote of x equals negative 1. Now we just have that last interval to the right of the x equals 3 vertical asymptote to try to figure out what's going on there. So pick a number to the right of 3. So let's look at x equals 4. So f of 4 equals 16 over 16 minus 8 minus 3. So how about 16 over 5? So that's 3 and a 4. Fifth. So the point 4 and a little above 3. So our point is here. And we get know again that we're going to approach each of those asymptotes. So we can draw the left and the right ends of that part of our rational equation. So remember, you're picking any extra point. So pick some easier values for x, plug them in to find the point that you can graph. Now, here's another example where we're going to try to work backwards. So we're given some key information about a function, and we want to write that function. So we need to know what each of these things is telling us. Well, first, we're told the x-intercepts. We have x-intercepts of negative 3, 0, and negative 1, 0. Remember, your x-intercepts tell you all about the numerator. So we know that our numerator, in order to have negative 3, 0 as an intercept, well, that would be an x equals negative 3, which is the same as x plus 3 as a factor. So then x equals negative 1 would be x plus 1 as a factor. So we know that our numerator is going to be x plus 3 times x plus 1. And let's put that in expanded form. That would be x squared plus 4x plus 3. Okay, next we have our vertical asymptote of x equals 2. Well, your vertical asymptote is from your denominator. So that's when your denominator is 0. So x equals 2 is when x minus 2 equals 0. So we have x minus 2 as part of our denominator. A horizontal asymptote of y equals 1. Well, in order to have an asymptote of y equals 1, your degree of your numerator equals the degree of your denominator, which means if we have an x squared in the numerator, we need to have x squared in the denominator. And, and then if we, have, geez, if we have x squared in the numerator, we need to have x squared in the denominator so that the degree is the same. So what happens if we square this? Because we only have one vertical asymptote, so let's square our denominator. That'll give us x squared minus 4x plus 4. So, so far, this equation meets the first three criteria. Now, what about this last criteria of a y-intercept of 0 and 3 fourths? In order to find the y-intercept, you're substituting in 0 for your x's. So these terms would be 0. These second terms would be 0. And the last here would simplify to 3 fourths. So by squaring that denominator, we have finalized that equation. So this is the equation of a function that meets all four of the given conditions.
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope you'll check out some of my other math tutorials.